السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه ثم أما بعد بارك الله فيكم أسعد الله أوقاتكم ونور قلوبكم بعن الإيمان والإسلام والإحسان الحمد لله we are reaching towards the end of the first week of Ramadan so you may be praying the tarawih tonight with the fifth or the sixth part of the Quran, sixth juz and we'll be looking at the sixth juz of the Quran in our daily reflections on the 30 juz in 30 days and this juz encompasses the end of Surah An-Nisa and we had talked about that in the fifth juz and also the beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah Surah Al-Ma'idah and we see several themes here, the beginning of Surah the last verses here that we see in the sixth juz of Surah An-Nisa we see some of the adab associated with al-jahra bisu, which we'll talk about in a little bit, about when can one be uh, forthwith and forthcoming about corruption and wrongdoing that has happened to them. And we also see the khitab, uh, the address to Ahl kitab which we see as a constant theme throughout both Surah Al-Nisa and Surah Al-Ma'idah. And we also see in Surah Al-Ma'idah the story of Qabil and Habil, otherwise known as Cain and Abel, the two sons of, or two of the sons of Adam, alayhi salam, the first man and the first prophet, alayhi salam. And we see some of the dietary laws also, beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah, حُرْمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ And also the Salatul uh, Ayat uh, Al-Wudu, the verse of Wudu, is also mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah that we'll also uh, be looking at, inshallah, as a theme. And just as a general theme, and you might have noticed in your recitation thus far from Surah Al-Baqarah all the way now to Surah Al-Nisa, that Ahl Al-Kitab are mentioned often. And sometimes the address is actual, actually addressing Ahl Al-Kitab, who are the people of the book, and generally uh, acknowledged as being the Christians and the Jews of that particular time. And one of the things that um, the Prophet Sallallahu in one of the hadith and that he told the Muslims, his ummah, that you will follow uh, this group or this people just like the lizard follows in the lizard hole. And then the Sahaba asked, uh, who were you talking about? Al-Yahud wa nasara the Jews and the Christians? Then he said, Faman, who else? So he's, the Qur'an is reminding us and inviting us not to fall into the same traps and the same pitfalls that happened to the communities before us, the nations before us. And as a matter of point, all of the people who are living now and all of the people who lived after the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, after he was a Prophet are the Ummah of Muhammad So an Ummah al-Dawah, Ummah al-Istijabah whether they are the people who are still yet to be called to the teachings of Muhammad وسلم, or they have already answered the call of the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad So um, our understanding then of Ahl al-Kitab and the community of Ahl al-Kitab yes, does have a standing and even until this day but in terms of the Ummah in terms of the community, they are going to be following their community, their prophet, and their prophet is Muhammad وسلم, whether they choose him uh, willingly and voluntarily or whether on the day of judgment they will come to know and come to learn that he was indeed their prophet all of the time. So many of these verses are also a warning to the believers that we should not fall into the same missteps and mistakes that our predecessors have fallen into, though the Prophet وسلم, prophesies that we may eventually actually do that, which we have. But nonetheless, uh, we do our best and, and we try to follow our, our Prophet وسلم, as best as we can and try to encompass his teachings both in word and deed and in, in spiritual state. So the beginning of uh, this Juz as said, this the sixth uh, part of the Qur'an, begins with Qawli Ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, La Yuhibbu Allahu Jahra Bissu'i Min Al-Qawli Illa Man Zulim, Wa Kana Allahu Sami'an Alima. إِن تُبْدُوا خَيْرًا أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ أَوْ تَعْفُوا عَنْ سُوءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَفُوًا قَدِيرًا لَا يُحِبُّ اللَّهُ جَهْرَ بِالسُوءِ Allah does not love al-jahr, uh, outspoken, mentioning, bisu. Here, bisu with evil or of evil can be interpreted in a couple of different ways. The Mufassirun, the exegetes of the Qur'an, they said here that uh, a possible interpretation is that something that was a mazlama, something that was uh, a dhulm visited upon you, then you have the right 
to seek uh, retribution. Then you have the right to seek justice on yourself, on your behalf. Uh, and that also is a theme that we see throughout the Qur'an, uh, uh, to seek justice. But to seek justice via the proper channels, via the proper channels. So sometimes seeking justice can be at the level of uh, an individual, if it's something that can handle, be handled personally between individuals. And those would, would be for minor things. Uh, you know, someone uh, forgot to uh, pay you back a loan or something like that, or you're trying to get the, uh, the debt repaid, uh, or uh, someone may have said an unkind word to you, then you can, or even between spouses, then there can be reminders and rejoinders between them. But if we're talking about justice that involves an authority, someone in an authority, authoritative position, like a ruler, like the police, someone of that level of authority, then it is not halal, it's not permissible for you to go seek that on your own. So jahra bisu in this case would be to present your case. So that's why the verse ends with la yuhibbu Allahu jahra bisu'i min al-qawli from to mention it illa man zulim illa man zulim otherwise jahra bisu to speak ill of things and ill of people and ill of other things is not from the uh, adab of Islam Allahu a'lam wa kana Allahu sami'an 'alima and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears all things and he sees all things so whatever is said no one is going to escape it and it said in one of the asbab nuzul of this particular verse, uh, one of the circumstances that is narrated of this particular verse is that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was uh, some of the Quraysh were speaking to him a, and actually reviling him and cursing him in a very ill way. And Abu Bakr Siddiq and the Prophet Sallallahu were there and the, Abu Bakr Siddiq yani, refrained from responding to them for a while. And then eventually he, he responded back to them. At this point the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sort of turned away and then Abu Bakr Siddiq who asked the Prophet ﷺ, why did you turn away? He said, I saw the angels responding to them until you actually said something. And that brings us to the second part of, uh, or the second verse here in relation to this. In tubdu khayran aw tukhfuhu aw ta'afu an su'in fa inna Allah kana afuwan qadira. In tubdu khayran aw tukhfuhu. So if you bring out good, if you're outward with it, tubdu al ibda. أو تخفوه الإخفاء or you conceal it أو تعفو عن سوء أو تعفو عن سوء فإن الله كان عفوا قديرا So here there's a shart and you may ask well, where is the jawab al shart in the in Arabic like what is the condition if you are to bring out good or you to conceal the good or you are to pardon أو تعفو عن سوء or you to pardon others for the evil that they have done or visited upon you فإن الله so that indicates then Jawab is to be Rabbani, is to be more like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we saw in Surah Al Imran, Kunu Rabbani Nabima Kuntum Tarimun al Kitabu Bima Kuntum Tadrusun. Be Rabbaniin. Be more Rabbani in the Jamali attributes, the beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which include this Al Afu wa Rahma. Fa in Allah kana afuwan, which means he is most clement. Qadiran, but he has complete ability. And they said those two things go together. Because you cannot be clement with someone or pardon someone if you don't have the ability actually to seek retribution or to visit upon them something similar to what they visited upon you. Then in that case it might be fear or it might be incapability. But it's not afu. So they say al afu ma'al qudra. Al afu ma'al qudra. So to be clement or clemency is with ability to do otherwise. Then otherwise, where is, where is the intention? Where is the niyyah to actually be clement with someone? So, and ta'fu also, aqrabu uh, taqwa Surah Al-Baqarah. And ta'fu aqrabu taqwa And to pardon others is closer to taqwa. Why is it closer to taqwa? Because it's very difficult. Oftentimes, you just seek the requisite amount of justice that will be commensurate with the mazlamah, with the wrong that was done to you. But when things are done wrong to us, it stirs within us a type of passion, not just for justice, but also revenge, intiqam. And that uh, passion for revenge may take you over bounds, such as now that you are no longer just the mazloom, the one who is wrong, but you now become the zalim. Then you now become the zalim. We will see later on in the beginning of Surah Al-Ma'idah about Qabil and, ha and Habil, that Qabil killed Habil, and uh, Habil said, uh, I will not extend my, my hand towards you to, to do the same as you did to me. 
and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that was a form of fadila, a form of virtue and a form of afu, that he did not want to be a participant in the sin of two brothers fighting each other, so he would rather have been killed than to defend himself. But we'll talk more about that when we get to those particular verses. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَيَقُولُونَ نُؤْمِنُ بِبَعْضٍ وَنَكْفُرُ بِبَعْضٍ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ حَقًّا وَاعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَلَمْ يُفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْهُمْ أُولَئِكَ سَوْفَ يُؤْتِيهِمْ أَوْ يُؤْتِيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا We have talked about this difference between tafdeel, between certain prophets being given certain virtues or certain things that other prophets were not given. Like we say Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Kaleem Allah, the one that was spoken to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Ibrahim Khalilullah, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Sayyidina Habibullah, the beloved of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's a difference between tafdeel wa tafriqa. So the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, la nufarriqu bayna ahadim mir rusuli. So the tafriqa or the tafriq is to say this one was a prophet and this one was not. So they're all prophets and messengers. All 25 mentioned in the Quran were prophets and messengers. Minhum man qasasna alayk, minhum lam naqsushum alayk, as the verse will come later. Some of them that we have been told about, some of them we have not been told about. So we believe there were many more prophets than the 25 mentioned. Whether they are actually 124,000 as mentioned in some of the hadith, including 313 of those being messengers, or not, we are not burdened with knowing the exact number, but it is our aqidah that we believe in all of them. But there were people of Ahlul Kitab before us who made a distinction between certain prophets and others. Some disbelieved in Jesus and some believed in Jesus. Some believed in Muhammad like Muslims do and some disbelieved in Muhammad. So this verse is saying, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ The ones who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers, وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ And they want to make this distinction between Allah and His messengers, because Allah sends His messengers. وَيَقُولُونَ نُؤْمِنُ بِبَعْضٍ And they say, we believe in some. وَنَكْفُرُ بِبَعْضٍ And we disbelieve in some. وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا And they're seeking what they think is a middle way between those two things. And Allah corrects that notion. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ حَقَّا They are truly the disbelievers. وَاَعْتَدِنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا And we have prepared for the most grievous punishment. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ And the ones who believe in Allah and His messengers. وَلَمْ يُفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ And they make no distinction between them in that they're all prophets and messengers. أُولَئِكَ سَوْفَ يُؤْتِيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ They will be given their reward. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving and most merciful. I also want to look at this part that comes here, a few verses later, that talks about the, this is the one uh, area of the Quran, one part of the Quran where the crucifixion of Jesus, or lack thereof, or the crucifixion in general, is mentioned. And this begins with Qawlihi uh, Ta'ala, talking about uh, uh, the Jewish tribes before, or Bani Israel, beginning with Qawlihi Ta'ala, يَسْأَلُكَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ أَن تُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ كِتَابًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَقَدْ سَأَلُوا مُوسَىٰ أَكْبَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَقَالُوا أَرِنَ اللَّهَ جَهْرًا فَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّعِقَةُ بِظُلْمِهِمْ ثُمَّ اتَّخَذُوا الْعِجْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتُ فَعَفَوْنَا عَنْ ذلك واتينا موسى سلطانا مبينا ورفعنا فوقهم الطور بميثاقهم وقلنا لهم ادخلوا الباب السجدا وقلنا لهم لا تعدوا في السبت واخذنا منهم ميثاقا غليظا فبما نقضهم ميثاقهم وكفرهم بايات الله وقتلهم الانبياء بغير حق وقولهم قلوبنا غلف بل طبع الله عليها بكفرهم فلا يؤمنون الا قليلا so the Jews of that time as they asked Musa, as they asked Moses before, that أَرِنَ اللَّهَ جَهْرَ Let us see Allah come physically in front of us, that we can see with our own eyes. 
So they also asked the Prophet ﷺ, the Jewish tribes who live in Medina, يَسَأَلُكَ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ أَنْ تُنَزَّ عَلَيْهِمْ كِتَابًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Bring down a book from the sky that we can see in the same way that Musa السلام, received the Torah behind the burning bush. What was... فَقَدْ سَأَلُوا مُوسَىٰ أَكْبَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Then Allah says to them, they asked Moses something bigger than that. فَقَالُوا أَرِنَ اللَّهَ جَهْرًا They said, let us see Allah with our eyes. فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّعِقَةُ بِظُلْمِهِمْ Then the sa'iqa, then the punishment took them بِظُلْمِهِمْ يعني بِسَبَبِ ظُلْمِهِمْ by their dhulm, by way, because of what they did and their wrongdoing. ثُمَّ اتَّخَذُوا الْعِجْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ Then they took the golden calf as an idol. بعد ما جاءتهم البينات. And this was right after they crossed the Red Sea. فَعَفَوْنَ عَنْ ذَلِكَ And then Allah SWT says, we even dismissed that, we pardoned that, we were clement with that. وَأَتَيْنَا مُوسَى سُلْطَانًا مُبِينًا But we gave Musa the Sultan al-Mubin, the great authority over them. And then uh, Allah summarizes what happened. With all of that, and this is coming up to Isa alayhi salam. فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَكُفْرِهِمْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ So their breaking of the covenants and their disbelief in the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَتْلِهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ And their murder of the prophets without any right. وَقَوْلِهِمْ قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفِ And they said our hearts are covered. بَلْ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Allah has stamped that upon their hearts and very few of them will come to belief. وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ وَقَوْلِهِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُهْتَانًا عَظِيمًا And their disbelief and what they said about Sittina Maryam, Maryam al-Batul alayhi salam. بُهْتَانًا عَظِيمًا Al-Buhtan is to make something up, a fariyya, a lie. And we know what the lie was about Maryam, that somehow Jesus was not a miraculous birth and the belief of Muslims and all of us is that Jesus was a miraculous birth without father. إِنَّ مَثَلِ the khalq of, of Adam is the same as the khalq of Jesus, as the Qur'an later states. The creation of Adam is similar to the creation of Jesus. Adam was without mother or father. Jesus, alayhi salam, without father. وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّ قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ يِسَى بِنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And for what they said, all of this that happened to them, and for what they said, that we have killed Christ, the son of Mary, رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The messenger of Allah. That's what they said. And then the next part is what Allah says. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Rather, it was made to look like that. شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِّنْ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا تِبَاعَ الظَّنِّ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لِيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا So وَقَوْلِهِمْ And they said, we killed Jesus the son of Mary, the messenger of God. And then Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ It was made to look like that. There are various interpretations from the ulama about what this tashabbuh looked like. How was their stashbi? What, what actually did they see? One possible uh, interpretation, and when I say why is there various interpretations? Yes, there are uh, recountings of this particular story, maybe in the Israeliyat, but we don't, which is things that were narrated by the Bani Israel themselves or by Ahl al-Kitab, which the Prophet ﷺ said, don't say that they're wrong, don't say that they're right. لا تصدقهم ولا تكذبهم Don't say that they have been truthful, they have lied, we just don't have the uh, way to determine their veracity, but they're taken into consideration sometimes when we consider a certain number of the backstories that may pertain to some of these verses. So all that we know for certain, there was a tashbih, shubbiha lahum, and that Jesus himself certainly was not crucified. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا Certainly he was not crucified. So one interpretation is that Isa alayhi salam said to the Hawariyin, he said to his disciples around him, which one of you will take upon my likeness and will be the one who will die on the cross for, rather than me, and will be a sacrifice for Jesus السلام, and for the Ummah. And that's one interpretation. Another interpretation is that uh, the one who betrayed Jesus to the Pharisees and actually told them where to find him and who he was, and in, uh, in the Christian narrative his name was Judas, he is the one that the Shabbat fell upon. He is the one who was made to look exactly like Jesus, and then he was the one that was crucified uh, and died on the cross. 
And then Allah SWT says, وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِنْ Most people don't realize it, but it took 400 years for the church to determine what exactly happened. Was Jesus actually crucified? Was it someone else? Is he divine? Is he not divine? وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِنْ The ones who differed about it still remain in doubt. وَمَا لَهُ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمِ إِلَّا تِبَعَ الظَّنِّ They have no certain knowledge about it. All they have is اتِبَعَ الظَّنِّ Following suspicion. وَمَا قَتَعْلُوهُ يَقِينَ But certainly they did not kill him. بَلْ رَفَعَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Rather Allah raised him. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا how was he raised? We know that night of Isra and Ma'raj, when the Prophet ﷺ visited the Prophets in the seven heavens, that he found in the second heaven, Yahya alayhi salam, the cousin of Jesus, and Isa alayhi salam, both of them. So it is said that that night of Isra and Ma'raj, all of the Prophets that the Prophet ﷺ met and led in prayer, for example, for Al-Aqsa, were uh, likeness of the souls of those people, because they all have passed away, except for Jesus, who was there himself. Wallahu a'lam, is what the ulama say. وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لِيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ And there will be from the people of Ahl al-Kitab, except that they will believe in him before he passes away. So we believe in the second coming of Christ, that Isa alayhi salam will return and he will kill the Antichrist, al-Masih al-Dajjal. And then he, everyone will know that he is a prophet of Islam, he will follow the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Uh, he will marry, he will have children. And then when he passes away, alayhi salam, he will be buried next to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam in al-Madinah. Fil Hujr al-Sharifa, insha'Allah. And so there, at that point, people will believe in him and know who he truly was. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا And then the day of judgment, he will bear witness upon them. As Allah is going to say to Isa alayhi salam, أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِ وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهِينَ مِنْ دُونِ لَا قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ مَا أَقُلِ إِلَّا مَا عَلَمْتَنِي يعني uh, are, you, are you the one that said to the people to take you and your mother as gods other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Qala subhanak. I cannot say except that which you have taught me. So he will be a witness and bear witness upon the, uh, the umam, the communities, the nations of that day. So I want to go ahead now to Surah Al-Ma'idah. which begins with قوله تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أوفوا بالعقود أحلت لكم بهيمة الأنعام إلا ما يتلى عليكم غير محل الصيد وأنتم حرم إن الله يحكم ما يريد So all you believe أوفوا بالعقود Fulfill your covenants and your oaths أحلت لكم بهيمة الأنعام so the, the beasts that are an'am, that are, are lawful for you to eat and to raise for meat, are mentioned here. They're all lawful for you. إِلَّا مَا يُتْلَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ Except those that are going to be specifically mentioned, which will come in the next verse. غَيْرِ مُحِلِّ الصَّيْدِ وَأَنْتُمْ حُرُمْ And also, not while you hunt them and you are in a state of ihram. So amongst the ahkam, the legal rulings, is that if one is in a state of ihram, in other words, they're doing their hajj or their umrah, they are not allowed to hunt or to kill an animal until الإحلال من الإحرام till they get out of their ihram. إن الله يحكم ما يريد. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who is going to determine these legal rulings as He pleases. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تحل شعائر الله ولا الشهر الحرام ولا الهدي ولا القلائد ولا آمين البيت الحرام يبتغون فضلا من ربهم رضوانا وإذا حللتم فاستادوا. So this is a Medinian surah. And this verse that comes, uh, the third, the second verse, O oh, you who believe, لا تحل شعائر الله Do not uh, transgress against the شعائر الله which are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is love's عام and then comes the khas, then the more specific understanding of that. ولا الشهر الحرام or the sacred months. So the sacred months were observed before the prophetic teachings before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu talked about them, most likely from the time of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. And we know that there are things in Shara'a min Qablina, that the Sharia of those before us, that are affirmed by Islam. And amongst those things are the sacred months. So Rajab, the sacred month, and Dhul Qa'da and Dhul Hijjah and Al Muharram are the sacred months. And they were made sacred because those last three months that are together 
were the months that people would be traveling to Hajj and so they wanted to travel in a caravan, they would be safe from harm, from uh, raiding uh, tribes and, uh, and raiding uh, parties that might take their, uh, uh, their wealth and their camels and their caravan wealth with them. So this was kind of an institution that was institutionalized in the Arabian Peninsula. And here the Quran is instructing the believers to continue to observe that. And the hadi is the sacrificial animal we bring with you to our hajj. Qalaid Qalaid also a type of animal that you have a, a kind of a bell tied around it to indicate that it's for the hadi. Amin al bayt al haram or those who are seeking the bayt al haram. Yani Amin, yani qasidin, they are seeking to go there. Yabtaguna fadlam min rabbihim waridwana. They are seeking the virtue from their Lord and Ridwan. So this ayah was before that uh, uh, the mushrikeen were not allowed to be anywhere near the haram sometime after this. But before that, those who wanted to make pilgrimage, the verse is telling them that they should be allowed to do so and that the Muslims should not stop them from preventing from doing so. And many of them wanted to because they still had the memory of when they were stopped from making the Umrah the year before or the year of Salah al-Hudaybiyah. And then they came back the next year. So this was still fresh in their minds, but um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had other plans in mind for them. And so this was the ruling that was issued at the time. If you're outside of your ihram, then you can hunt. What we just referred to earlier. Do not let the hatred of, of people for you or you for them. And صَدُّوكُمْ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ that they stopped you from going to the Masjid al-Haram, and ta'tadu, do not use that as an excuse to uh, incur injustice against them. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى And cooperate in birri and taqwa, in righteousness and in taqwa. وَلَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Not something in sin or udwan. They said al-ithm includes things that you transgress against Allah and against people. أَمَّا الْعُدْوَانِ when you transgress against people. So it's like visit violence upon them, to be violent with them. Allah And have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah shadeedul iqab. Allah has a strict punishment. Then we have here the ayah that tells about the dietary practice. Hurrimat alaykum ul So it has been haram or forbidden for you, the mayta, things that have not been slaughtered properly. Waddamu and blood. So here it's talking about free flowing blood, it should not be used. And the Arabs used to do in jahiliyyah. When they didn't have anything to eat, they would have like a slight incision in the leg of the camel and extract blood and then fry it over a fire and eat it. And that was a forbidden practice afterwards. The meat of swine. And that which has been consecrated or dedicated for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walmunkhaniqa is the animal that dies by strangling. Walmawkuda. That one that has killed by you know, a blunt force, like a stick. Mutaradiya, uh, that which has fallen from a high place, like a cliff. Walnatiha, that which has been gored by another animal with its horns. Wama akala sibru, and that which an animal of prey has eaten. Illa ma zakaytum, except that which you have slaughtered. So here, illa could be with the meaning of. Ex lakin, rather that which you have slaughtered, you are allowed to eat. Wama ala nusub, and that which has been slaughtered out of nusub in jahiliyyah, they had like a, some sort of platform that they would slaughter animals upon and let the blood flow. This was a, an idolatrous practice that was forbidden by Islam. Wan tastaqsimu bil azlam, al istiqsam bil azlam. Here is that they would do divining arrows, so they'd have an arrow that say yes, an arrow that say no, when they want to make a decision. And an arrow that didn't have anything on it. And then they would draw the arrows and make the decision to make. So all of those practices were forbidden. ذَلِكُمْ fisq. All of that is fisq. All of that is corruption. الْيَوْمَ يَئِسَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ دِينِكُمْ And it said that this particular verse was, was revealed on the day of Arafah in Hajjat al Wada'a, when the Prophet ﷺ delivered his farewell sermon. So that's what the yawm is. This day, الْيَوْمَ يَئِسَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ دِينِكُمْ this day, the disbelievers, يَأِسُوا مِنْ دِينِكُمْ يعني, They have uh, lost all hope that they can overcome you and stop you from this mission. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ So do not fear them. وَخْشَوْنِي And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ 
And in some of the other ways, this was the last verse to be revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. This day I have completed your religion. And I have completed my favor upon you. And I have been contented with Islam as your religion. But if you find yourself in a situation, in a situation of hunger and of starvation, and you have no other choice, then all those things that were mentioned that you're not allowed to eat, then you can eat. And there's two opinions about how much of that you can eat. So Imam Malik said that you can eat hatta shaba. You can eat until you are satiated. While Imam al-Shafi and those who follow him said that you only eat enough to lift your state of hunger, but not more than that. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most uh, forgiving and most merciful. يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَا ذَا أُحِلَّ لَهُمْ So then the believers ask, well, what is halal for us, for us to eat? قُلْ أُحِلَّ لَكُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ Everything that is tayyib, everything that brings benefit to you, is halal. وَمَا عَلَّمْتُمْ مِنَ الْجَوَارِحِ مُكَلِّبِينَ تُعَلِّمُونَهُنَّ مِمَّا عَلَّمَكُمُ اللَّهِ And the Arabs back then and still to this day hunt with animals. So they had hunting dogs. So this is referring to the hunting dogs. So eat from the tayyibat and that which you have taught al-jawarih. In other words, the canines that you have taught to hunt. مُكَلِّبِينَ يعني, uh, Taught properly and trained. So to hear trained. تُعَلِّمُونَهُنَّ مِمَّا عَلَّمَكُمُ اللَّهِ So to train them properly. And then there's some difference of opinion. Is it only specific to dogs, a hunting dog itself, or some other sort of hunting animal can be used? And many of the ulama said that hunting falcons also, that you can hunt with a falcon as well. But with the stipulation that comes here, فَقُولُ مِمَّا أَمْسَكْنَ عَلَيْكُمْ So eat from that which they have held without eating from. So if they eat from the animal, there is a slight difference of opinion, but the Malikiyah, they say that if it, the animal eats from it, that means it's not well trained and you shouldn't eat from it. But if they know how to go hunt and kill the animal, usually animals that are small prey, like uh, you know, uh, rabbits and uh, small animals that, that a dog or a falcon can get to, uh, then you are allowed to eat it. But remember to mention Allah's name over it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَرِيعُ حِسَابٍ But have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you into a reckoning. So I will stop here insha'Allah. وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَعْلَىٰ وَعَالَىٰمْ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ وَأَسْعَىٰ لَكُمْ فِي هَذِي الْأَيَامِ مُبَارَكَةِ وَالْأَيَالِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ إِنَّهُ لِيُذَلِكْ وَالْقَادُرُ عَلَيْهُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ الل